My name is Mary Jane Duncan. I'm 48 years old and I come from North East Fife. Before my diagnosis, I was shamefully ignorant about anything to do with secondary breast cancer. Um, cancer has been quite prevalent in our family history and yet I didn't have any understanding of what it meant. I didn't appreciate there was different stages and I didn't appreciate what the different stages meant to different diagnosis. I was diagnosed in September 2018 when I was 42 years old. At that time, my children were 15, 12 and 10 years old and I ran my own business. I had a very busy cafe um, that we'd been running for years prior to that and it came as a complete shock, a complete bolt out of the blue. Um, the only indication we had was I was maybe slightly tired um, but that could come from being a mother of three children or being self-employed. It could have been for any reason. Um, I went to my GP because I was concerned about a lump that I'd found in my left breast that ironically I'd ignored because I was too busy dealing with everything else. Um, and very quickly from there they diagnosed me with triple negative breast cancer and we were told to still go on a family holiday that we had booked um, and I would start my chemotherapy the day after I came back and when I came back to go for my initial chemotherapy it was cancelled because while I was away the scan results had shown that it was more serious I was actually diagnosed with secondary breast cancer de novo so right from the very beginning it had already spread. Secondary breast cancer for us has been a massive learning curve. There's been a lot of information right from the very beginning, which has been quite difficult to take in, but we've dealt with it as a family. We don't hide information from our children regardless of their age. We have been exceptionally lucky with my treatment and we've involved them at every stage if they've wanted to know stuff we've told them. When thinking about secondary breast cancer, changes that could be made that would have helped me, um, there's quite a lot of information given right at the very beginning when you're already spiralling. You've been handed the worst news of your life and when you leave the breast clinic it's with a, a plethora of bright pink leaflets um, there's quite a lot of waiting which is okay and then when things happen they happen very quickly um, one of the, the things that I found very helpful was to have approachable staff who are able to answer questions directly um, and with care enough to tell tell us exactly what what's coming um, I think there's a lack of of resources and facilities for children. Um, we searched for things to help our three girls who are now young adults and I don't feel they've had any support other than what we've been able to provide, especially now when it's more appropriate for them to find information online that and it's easier for them to do that than to ask someone because they don't have the same access to the medical professionals that we do. So something that might support families would be great. I know there are lots of fabulous organisations providing um, treats and stuff for youngsters, but I feel for a young adult who might face up to the re reality that they have a parent that they might lose, it's, it's quite a difficult thing for them to accept. And also how will it affect them in the future? Will it affect them being able to get insurance? Will it affect them every time they have to fill out a medical forum? Are they at more risk? There's one thing a parent reassuring them that they're not after genetic testing, but how do they know? Uh, so when I was given my diagnosis, I ran a really, really busy cafe and we had a lot of staff who relied on me. And we made the horrible decision that we would have to sell our business. Um, due to the unreliability of my being able to be on the floor. Um, I'm not 
financially able to medically retire and I also think for my own mental health I couldn't. So I decided to retrain and went back to college and studied and achieved an HNC in professional writing. I write for two national newspapers and I have my substack with two friends and I also do some consultancy work. All of this can be done a lot more easily because I can do it in my terms and I can take on work when I'm feeling well enough to do it and I don't feel I'm letting anybody down if I do need a day where I'm just in a heap on the couch doing nothing. Um, so looking ahead, I'm hoping to keep as well as possible for as long as possible. I would like to see my three girls grow up and achieve whatever dreams that they hope to achieve, whether that's education or families of their own. Um, I'd like to travel a little bit more and hopefully in the meantime there are some more uh, life-lengthening treatments discovered for my particular type of cancer. <laughs>